Planned Parenthood has extended their reach beyond just the abortion clinic on the corner uh, and beyond just uh, uh, those who may make the choice to go to them for, for uh, birth control. They are very active within America's schools and, uh, and in providing sex education for American young people. If you'll just slow down the rush and pressure of your feelings a little, then judgment has a better chance to take hold. When most parents hear about sex education, they, they immediately think back to their gym teacher, you know, giving them some of the basic facts of human biology. Um, but that's not what is being taught today in our schools. Asking for consent can actually be kind of sexy. Wanna show me your bedroom? Show me where you want me to touch you. Do you wanna help me take these clothes off? Uh, it is expanded to where in some cases 70 hours of instruction in not really understanding our sexual uh, makeup in terms of the biological realities of man and female, male and female. Uh, rather, it is, it is basically how to engage in sex. It's a tutorial on uh, sexual activity. And in fact, much of the material put forth by Planned Parenthood, put forth by the Human Rights Campaign, uh, promoted by the Southern Poverty Law Center, quite frankly, is pornographic. And it is poisoning the minds of our children. There's a, a story out of a rural Virginia county where parents learned that their ninth grade daughters had been shown a Planned Parenthood sex ed video um, about how to pleasure their sex partners um, and focusing on certain sexual organs of their partners. And uh, pr the video promoted the use of sex toys and other th I, I, things I can't even mention. If there are parents today who think that uh, when we talk about sex education in public schools in 2020, we're just talking about where babies come from. They need to be, re need to be educated <laughs> because sex education today is not, uh, is not your parents' or your grandparents' sex education. Um, sex education uh, has gradually become uh, something that is designed to promote a very specific agenda, really the agenda of the sexual revolution. We've collected stories from all over the country about younger and younger kids being uh, taught about the three kinds of intercourse, which I won't get into, but you can imagine what these kids are being taught about. Even if a parent opts their child out of sex education or refuses to opt them into sex education, their child may still be exposed to radical teachings promoting the LGBT agenda uh, in other classes, uh, in history classes, in English classes, in, in virtually any class that they take that are uh, promoting the teaching of LGBT history um, as, a, as a social science elective or even a mandatory class, uh, rather than just talking about these issues within sex ed. Planned Parenthood boasts that they are now the nation's leader in sex education in our schools. Critics note that we should follow the money. And when it comes to Planned Parenthood, there's a lot of money to follow. One of the most striking aspects of sex education as it pertains to Planned Parenthood and conflict of interest, if you will, is Planned Parenthood, the doors are open in our public schools for them to come in and teach comprehensive sexual education, which is basically code for um, sexual activity. Now, think about this for a moment. Planned Parenthood, the largest abortion provider in the nation, receiving about a half billion dollars a year in taxpayer funds, is going into our schools and teaching kids how to engage in quote unquote safe sex, which we know there's no such thing. One of the things Planned Parenthood has been successful in doing is getting abortion into sex ed lessons. Abortion is taught as a positive option for an unplanned pregnancy. This is a pipeline for them in terms of their biggest money-making activity is abortion. And so they are 
encouraging kids to engage in activity, which is going to result in pregnancy, which results in those seeking abortions. This is a moneymaker for Planned Parenthood, and, and under any other circumstance, people would be uh, screaming foul that there is a conflict of interest, but yet we continue to allow Planned Parenthood to operate with impunity in our schools. These sex ed lessons will also talk about secret abortions and um, how teens have the right to a secret abortion without their parents' knowledge. Um, and in my county, the sex ed lessons uh, say that there are lawyers, free lawyers that you can get who will take you to a judge to get approval for that secret abortion. If Planned Parenthood is in your school or in your child's school, they're going to be promoting their agenda of the sexual revolution, uh, promoting that, um, that everyone should be sexually active as long as they use birth control, that if they, birth control fails, that everyone, every uh, woman should have access to abortion. And they're gonna be teaching that to your children uh, when, when they're permitted to take part in sex education in schools. And now Planned Parenthood is trying to get clinics established in public schools. The philosophy in the public schools today will become the philosophy of the culture tomorrow. Planned Parenthood is not only the nation's leading sex educator, they are also the nation's leading abortion provider. This is not some poorly funded organization. We're talking about billions of dollars. Um, Planned Parenthood alone has $1.9 billion in assets. They are receiving more than half a billion dollars in taxpayer money from us each year from the government. Um, so it, it is an industry. It's a money-making business. They, you know, they are technically a nonprofit, but as I was told by my supervisor, nonprofit is simply a tax status, not a business model. Recently, with reaction to the coronavirus shutting down much of the country and with federal bailouts for small businesses in the payroll protection program, somehow Planned Parenthood was able to get millions of dollars of COVID-19 bailout funds. And some on the left want them to receive even more of our money. Well, we've, we've known that Nancy Pelosi sees government and the growth of government as a good thing. The pandemic crisis has given her the opportunity to realize all of her dreams to fund various left-wing causes that have nothing to do with the pandemic crisis, but afford an opportunity to pay people, increase government dependency, and advance the democratic, the left-wing democratic uh, agenda. As Americans began to look at the implementation of the payroll protection program, pro-lifers were shocked to discover that Planned Parenthood had got their hands on over $80 million of this money. Now this is money intended to keep businesses open during the time of the COVID crisis, keep them from shutting their doors. And here's Planned Parenthood exploiting this program and taking money in, even as their abortion numbers are climbing during the COVID crisis. In fact, Planned Parenthood went so far as to open a new abortion facility in Waukegan, Illinois, even as they were getting this money designed to keep places from shutting down. So that's particularly galling for businesses that are trying to keep their doors open for Planned Parenthood to be having grand openings and taking in over $80 million from the federal government. There's no question that for those that are engaged in abortion in the industry, it's about money. They're not in it for altruistic reasons. They're certainly not in it for women. They use the rhetoric of women, women's health, the best interest of women. They have no interest in women. If they did, they would want to have informed consent. They'd want to have the women have an informed choice, which means to have that woman absolutely know what she's about ready to do to her body and to her child. They would be in favor of ultrasounds being shown to women. They're opposed to all of that, and the reason is, is because they're interested only in the business side of abortion that makes millions and millions of dollars for these individual abortion providers. Planned Parenthood does not speak for women. They are not the voice of women. All you have to do is look at where they make their money and how they exploit women and how they profit in every way possible, including breaking the laws in order to harvest and sell the body parts of aborted babies. They are not the voice of women and they don't speak for us.